In this video, we're going to look at how we can make some custom post-processing effects in Unity. We're going to make a shader using Shader Graph and create a custom render pass to use it. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. Okay, so here we're going to add some custom post-processing effects. This is usable in HGRP or URP, or really any custom SRP since it is based upon extending custom render passes. And all of the effects are made in Shader Graph, so it's really easy to make your own custom effects. All right, so here is my normal scene, just a player in a random level, and I can walk around, all right? And now let's see. And yep, I've enabled a simple black and white filter. So the character in Bush, I don't know, completely in black and white. So I made a custom shader in Shader Graph and applied it as a post-processing effect. And now here it is, a simple basic tint. Now with a foam blur, a pixelate effect, and finally, here is a really awesome dissolve shader effect. So this would be a really good, really easy effect to add to make some really cool transitions. All right, so this is what we want to make. Now I've covered a bunch of these shader effects previously, so check the link in the description to see the playlist. All of those effects can easily be applied as post-processing effects. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our scene. I just have my character and I can move around just like that. Now to make our custom post-processing effects, it's actually a pretty simple process, although finding the answer did take some digging. So if you're looking for the answer like I was, then hopefully this video will help you. What we need is a way to run some shader code on our image during the post-processing stage. Now, if you're watching this video many months in the future, then it's possible that URP was updated with an official way to do custom post-processing using the volume system. Right now, that is not possible, so here we're going to use a custom render pass. If you want to learn more about how to work with the universal render pipeline, then check the link in the description for the official examples. There's a lot of really cool demos, including one which does exactly what we're going to do in here. Okay, so let's do it. Now, as I said, we're going to create a custom render pass. So to do that, we're going to select our universal render pipeline asset. And here you can see the various renders that are assigned to it. And right now we're using the default forward render. So here it is, we can select it and see, yep, there's nothing different, it's the default. And then in here, we can click on the plus in order to add a render pass. And by default, we just have this one. So it's in here that we're going to add our custom render pass. So in the project files, let's create, go into rendering, universal render, and in here, let's create a renderer feature. Let's call this our blit render pass feature. And now just like this, if we select our forward render data again and click on the pause, yep, there we have our custom render pass feature. All right, so there it is. Now let's open up the script. And in here, we have the default file, which already has some very helpful comments. Here we have a class that extends the scriptable render pass. So by default, it has a configure method, which sets up the render pass, then the execute, which runs whatever render logic we want, and finally the cleanup at the end. So this is the render pass. And then we have this outer class, which extends the scriptable render feature. And this one is what sets up and enqueues our render pass. Now this system is extremely extensible. You can do pretty much anything in here and go as crazy as you want. But for our purposes, we just want really the simplest method possible. So here by default, we have the render pass event. This is where in the rendering process, our pass will be injected into. So in our case, let's set it to just before the post processing. Now, all we want is to take an image from the camera and apply a shader onto it. So the way we do that is again, we go into the execute function. And in here, we're going to simply call the blit function. So this function takes a source and applies a material with a shader and place the result in the destination. So we're going to need a command buffer, the source, destination, and the material with our shader. Now for the command buffer, we can simply get one up here. We go into the command buffer pool and we get the new command buffer. Okay, so we use this one in here. Next, we need a source. Now the source will be the color texture from the camera. 
So we can actually grab it down here. When we have a reference to our script on renderer, we can access the renderer to grab the camera color target. So this is what we need to pass onto our custom render pass. So for that, let's simply make a basic public field. And down here, we simply pass it. So we go into our scriptable render pass and we pass our source, okay? So now on our blink command, we can use our source. Then the destination will also be our source. And now finally, we need our material. So here in our render feature, let's make a class to hold all of our settings. So just like that, just basic class with our material. And now we need to remember to add the attribute system serializable so that our class shows up in the editor. And now let's just make a public field of this type. So there's our public field. And now if we go back into the editor, in here with our custom renderer selected, we can see, yep, indeed, we do have some settings and we do have a field for our material. All right, so let's make the material that we're going to use. We create a new material. Let's call this the tent post processing. And here let's select a very simple shader. So just a simple tint shader. We're going to inspect the shader and make a custom one in a bit. So here we have our material and just select it and assign it, okay. Now back in the code here, we have this material field and we just need to pass it onto our render pass. So let's make a constructor that will receive it. So we receive the material, we're going to pass it in, in here from the settings, passing the material onto the render pass, and then the render pass, we use the material in here. On our blit, now we have our material. All right, so we're almost there. We have our command buffer and we're doing a blit. Now, finally, we tell it to execute this command buffer. So we go into the context and call execute command buffer, pass in our command buffer. And finally, release it from the pool. So we go into the pool and call release on our command buffer. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now, if we go back into the editor, and nope, nothing has changed yet. So the issue here is we cannot directly copy from into the source. So we need to have a temporary texture in the middle. So let's do just that. In here, let's create a new render texture. Then we initialize it here on the constructor. We just give it a random name. And now down here, let's get a temporary render texture. So go into the command buffer to get a temporary render texture. Let's pass in this ID. And we want it to match our current rendering data. All right, so now we have our temporary render texture. Now we're going to copy from the source onto that render texture. And then after doing that, then we copy from the temporary onto the source. All right, just like that. So we're doing this because we cannot directly copy from into the same thing. So we need to use a temporary one in the middle of our process. All right, so now it should work and back into the editor. And yep, it immediately works. So we have our custom post-processing effect being applied. Awesome. Now here, one very important thing, if you're making your own effects and need to debug to see what's going on, then you can use the frame debugger. So you go up here onto the window, then analysis, and in here you have the frame debugger. This is a really useful tool, so just hit on enable. And now here we can view exactly what the render is doing and in what order. Now to find out which one of these is our custom pass, we can actually go back into our code and in here, when we are getting a new command buffer, we can actually give it a name. Let's name it our custom blit render pass. And now if we go back into the frame debugger, if we go down here, yep, we can see our custom blit render pass. So you can see how just before it, yep, there's no post-processing effect applied. And then afterwards, yep, we apply it. So here on the first pass, we can see that we are grabbing the color texture and we are placing it on our temporary color texture. And then we have the second draw, which takes from the temporary color texture and place it back onto our source camera color texture. So if you have issues with your effects, then the frame debugger is a very useful tool. All right, so now that everything is set up, we can finally easily make our custom effects. 
So let's first inspect how the tint shader works. And yep, here we are in our shader graph. Now for the output right now, it's just a simple sprite. Again, if you're watching this many months in the future, there may be a more dedicated master node for actual custom post-processing effects. But for now, we use this one. And then we really just take a tint color and apply a tint onto our main texture. So the color texture that comes from the camera gets inputted onto the reference underscore main text. Now I've already done a bunch of effects in Shader Graph. There's a playlist linked in the description, so check it out. All of those can be applied as post-processing effects. So here we have our tint effect, and by modifying the material, we can modify our actual effect. Yep, just like that. And now in the material, just swap out the shader for a different one. Now here is a pixelated shader, and yep, everything is extremely pixelated. Now here we have a very nice dissolve shader. It looks really interesting, so this one would be great for some kind of transition effect. And here we have our blur shader. So yep, here it is, our post-processing effect, and it looks great. So you can see how you can make whatever effect you want using the super useful shader graph and apply it as a post-processing effect. Like I said, this system is extremely extensible and customizable. For example, if you select your camera, in here you can actually see which renderer you're using. So for example, let's make another custom forward renderer. Okay, so I made a different forward render and applied it with a different material. And now here, if we select the pipeline asset, we can add the other renderer. And now on the camera here, we can select the dropdown and yep, now let's say we select the blur and there you go, everything is blurred. It's like this one and everything is tinted. So we could easily modify this through a script to get some really awesome effects. So like I said, extremely customizable. All right, so now that you have this knowledge, go ahead and make some awesome effects. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.